It's been about six months since my brother and I were out on an adventure, just the two of us. And uh, that's what we're doing this week. We are headed up to Reno. I've got a little project going on up there that KP is going to help me with. We're going to flat mount our Starlink dish up on the roof and do a 12 volt conversion to it, which I'm very excited about. Got another little project. We're going to try to get my rear view mirror camera relocated to the back so I can actually use it. And uh, Paul over here. He's got a, a little solar panel project that KP is going to help out with. So he and I are currently in Nevada. This is where we set up camp here last night. Just uh, right out here on the edge of some Air Force bombing range property. But we're currently standing on BLM land. And uh, yeah, I think we're done with all the morning activities and getting ready to roll out of camp and keep marching towards Reno. Upon pulling out of our camp just outside of Beatty, Nevada, Paul and I turned north on US-95 and made our way to a little spot just beyond Tonopah, Nevada. A little bit north of Tonopah, Nevada is the Crescent Dunes Solar Energy Plant. Uh, my brother tells me that this was in the movie Sahara uh, I have seen that movie. It's been a long time. I don't recall that, but I need to go back and watch it again now. But it's it's a pretty neat project. Uh, unfortunately, my understanding of this project is, I don't really know that I would call it a failed project, but it really didn't deliver up to expectations. And I think the amount of energy produced compared to the amount of energy it takes to run the plant really isn't that profitable. And uh, so it's had some financial trouble. But it's still a really neat facility and a a neat concept and uh, kind of one of these interesting things you just find out here in the middle of the desert in Nevada. With lunch on our minds, we headed roughly 100 miles north towards Middlegate, Nevada, where I knew just the perfect spot to put some food in our tummies. Here at the corner of 361 and Route 50 out here is Middlegate Station. Uh, I've stopped here a time or two before and uh, they make an excellent burger and if you ever have the opportunity to come through here I highly recommend you check it out. Cool place and uh, it's got a lot of history behind it. With our lunch cravings satisfied we headed roughly 74 miles northwest towards Silver Springs, Nevada, where we jumped on the Pony Express Trail and found our way to camp for the night. We drove quite the spider of roads back in this area trying to find a campsite and um, we weren't finding a lot of success and it's getting close to dark. So we just decided to set up on this little road right here. Not really a road, it's a, there's a little connector that's a flat spot between two trails and um, seems like the perfect place to park. It's, you know, 100 feet long maybe and it's flat enough. So I think that's going to work and uh, I guess let's go about getting camp set up. Oh, in other news, my um, Ram has popped a check engine light. There are no messages, but it's popped a check engine light. I've restarted it. It's still there. Maybe I'll disconnect the battery and see, or maybe I'll just roll with it until I get into Reno tomorrow and try to find a code reader to find out what it is. I have a sneaky suspicion it may be related to the DEF system. I had an error message pop up for that about a week and a half ago that cleared itself. But from what I've been reading on some of the forums, that's kind of the initial indicator that you're about to have a problem. So 
freaking unreliable def systems, but I'll hold complete judgment until I get the code read. Maybe that's not it, but whatever. Something has gone awry. After a great night's rest, Paul and I woke up and got right to work doing our day jobs. Once the workday was over, we broke camp and headed towards Carson City to get my truck looked at. The uh, fine folks here at the uh, Ram dealer in Carson City went ahead and pulled the codes for me and read them. Uh, I thought it was going to be a deaf system issue. It is not a deaf system issue. It is a transmission fault. So I don't really know how concerned I should be about that. Um, it's like a bad first gear ratio or something. And this truck, I have noticed when it's in tow haul mode, it is kind of doing some hard downshifts at times, which don't seem normal. Uh, but I wasn't overly concerned about it because, you know, it does increase the pressures when you're in tow haul for the shifts. So it doesn't, it doesn't slip the clutch as much was my understanding. But obviously something's going on. So the big question is, what do I do about it? Uh, they can't see me here for a couple weeks if they were going to work on it, they said. Um, I'm a good 500 miles from home and uh, don't really know what to do. So I'm going to Google some stuff up got the uh, transmission shop back in St. George. I'm going to see what they think, see what their opinion is, and uh, try to come up with a game plan here. Do I just try to drive it home and see what happens after we get the work done with KP? I don't know, but we'll find out. I stopped by the Ram dealer here in Reno, and uh, they were even worse. It was like two plus weeks to get in there. So I think what I'm going to do so I'm gonna roll the dice and try to drive the truck home. Hopefully it doesn't break down on the way. And while we're here getting the work done with KP, I'm just gonna leave the truck here. So we got it in the shop. KP is gonna keep it here, you know, the th two or three days so I don't have to drive it and put any more miles on it. And uh, Paul and I decided to go hotel it downtown. So KP is gonna give us a ride downtown. I'll check into the hotel. This is where I'll be until we head over to CKP tomorrow. The next day, I got up early and got right to work. Once the work day was over, I grabbed an Uber and headed over to KP's shop to find out how things were going. The guys were already hard at work getting the rear camera install finished up and getting started on the Starlink. All right, so the moment has arrived. Here KP, we go. KP is about to cut the dish up, and we're uh, things are about to start getting real. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah we're gonna do some markering with this jig, official star mount. <laughs> this is the official star mount, mount measuring mount system. Measuring system, yeah, according to the photos that I saw. So well, so uh, KP is now an official dealer for star mount systems and an installer. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> this is this, our first one. This but... is our first one, yep. <laughs> but that's okay. We trust KP. He's going to do a good job. <laughs> yeah, we'll go slow. But uh, we're going to walk you through it. So yeah. I guess let's good. get at it. It would be great if there was one of these I could watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <This> is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. So KP very scientifically marked the dish up. You saw how that worked. Yeah, I, I use the official star mount method. So with that the, is the official method. Set up this Dremel 4000 with a with a depth depth stop in here to it looks like just under looks like an eighth of an inch um, or maybe four something millimeters right around there um, exactly uh, as the photo in the instructions from star mount shows. So that's as precise as we've got. <laughs> so now we're gonna fire it up and carefully and slowly cut along this, this black line we've made.
KP just finished cutting the dish around his outline. And uh, now we're about to take the back of it off. There we go. It looks just like the pictures. It does. Yeah. This is all cut up. KP got all the crumbs out of the dish, whatever we're calling that. And detritus. Uh, what's that? Detritus. Detritus? Yeah, detritus. So test fit the dish a little bit just to kind of make sure basically it seemed to fit in the mount. And basically it does seem to fit. I think there may be a little bit of additional trimming, but it uh, looks pretty good. So I think next up is going to be working on the wiring. I had a little issue with my cable on this and it's stuck in there. That's my fault, not KP's. So KP is trying to sort out how to get that out. And uh, meanwhile, back here we got the uh, quick release mount going on the roof of the camper. So all kinds of, you got it. That, huh? You got it. <laughs> nice. Hold what we need out of here is this wiring right here. This is what we're after. So we're gonna do some modifications to this. <laughs> Apparently. Allegedly. Apparently. <laughs> Allegedly. With this being the all-in-one mount, I believe what we're looking at here is a router that they disassembled and basically mounted inside of this. So this would normally have a nice little box or something yeah. around it, but these are all the innards of it. I should have said this up front. I think this is unit one <laughs> <We're pretty sure laughs> for Star Mount Systems. That this is kind of their first production unit of this. So of the all-in-one. Of the all-in-one. Yeah, of the all-in-one. They've had the flat mounts, but of these kind of 12 volt conversion all in one solutions. This is the first one kind of out in the wild production wise. So I believe this cable that KP is working on, they, I think the kits are supposed to come with that maybe. Um, they're, they're talking about, so we're gonna have to do our own um, crimping of the RJ45 connection. But he was saying in the future that won't be required with the kids. Okay, so, so this is kind of what you're seeing here. May not, depending on when you're watching this video and where this is in production, you may not have to do this step. But for us, we're having to do this step. So what <laughs> KP's doing right here is he's, you know, getting the uh, sheathing off of this and he's being careful not to cut the shielding around the wire. That's kind of an important step. KP finished getting all of the uh, wires crimped and he went and you know plugged it all in and we'll show you where it all got plugged in in a minute but before everything goes back together we just want to run a quick test and uh, fire it up and just see did his did his, did his crimping work <laughs> so uh, that's what we're doing firing it up let's see what it does all right KP so I, I actually I missed filming some kind of maybe critical steps so let's just talk about that so we put the panel in, you put the panel in. We just basically were doing like a basic sniff test of the panel and getting the router up and running yep. and all that sort yep. of stuff, right? So it did not really initially work. So there was a little bit of uh, scrambling was, was to get router the router updating. Yeah. Right, so we got the firmware updated in the router and then that seemed to resolve a bunch of issues. And so I was able, we changed the admin password. I was able to update the SSS, SSID and the password and all that to what my old router was yep. and i think everything's good now yeah yeah it seems so, like it's working so yeah we're going full steam ahead on yeah so what, what do you got side. going on over here now come tell me oh okay so we're gonna run 
uh, power from the factory fuse block and uh, run it back through the cabinetry and then to here. Um, and then I'll put another switch, an identical JR products switch right here. So we can just turn the Starlink on and off. Um, and I don't know if Rob already talked about this, but one of the major features of this installation we're doing is that it's, it's star mounts all in one system. So it's not just the permanent or the semi-permanent removable flat mount setup with their cool box and everything. But it also switches the whole thing over to DC power so you don't need an inverter. To run. Theoretically, it's gonna be a little bit more efficient. Um, and it really should be. Although like Rob was talking about earlier with me, the main goal of this was just the convenience. So we're gonna run the DC power from the fuse block and through a switch and then up through the roof um, to where we have it mounted up there. So when Rob gets into camp, he can just turn the switch on and we'll have internet. And then when he's done, he can just turn it off. Super convenient, no setup, none of that. So no cables to route, no dishes to set up outside in the rain, that sort of thing. So should be really good, we're excited. <laughs> I mean, I kind of looked at this earlier, but uh -huh. this was the core that you were that you were crimping and everything, yep. right? Did yep. you, right here, that's what you turned that into. Yeah. And then um, there's the router. We got all that configured, all that stuff. So now this guy is just gonna pop right down in there. Yeah. Right. And it's just like so. Panels in there, and now we're getting ready to. This is the. Oh, it's clear. I just noticed it was clear. Yeah, it's very clear. So this is the cover, and then it's got all these screws going around here and then tighten against this gasket that's right here. And that is what makes it watertight. I think KP has everything on the roof buttoned up, looks like it. And uh, I think there's just a few more things to button up inside the camper. Get that switch working. It's a little long wire run to do, but it's <laughs> it's in a four wheel, so. KP says I'm oversimplifying what there's left to do. <laughs> All right, KP, so I think we're all wrapped up here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're finding something really funny. Uh, oh, no, I'm really tired. <laughs> really tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, no, he's, so, he's worked yeah. so hard, he's giddy. Yeah. But a uh, little like two day project here. We got the camera done, which is really awesome. Starlink's going. Yep. And uh, man, it was good stuff. It was so. good stuff. I think we maybe mentioned it already, but both are first products. Like, yes. No one's ever installed them. Their first runs for the manufacturer. I love testing new stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> might as well see. Yeah. Um, I'm like I said. I think we're with first ones to install the Starlink all-in-one from Starmount, and um, or very low numbers. And then, at least production-wise. Production-wise, sure. yeah. yeah. And then the camera. It's also something from Camera Source that they work with us to um, make a custom harness so it'll work with your truck. Yeah. But now it will be available once we give them our feedback on it uh, for purchase. Yep. So. Cool. Anyway. All right, man. Well, my brother and I are going to get back. I'm going to try to limp my truck home with whatever weird transmission luck, issues man. going on. <laughs> and uh, hopefully in two more days, I'll be back home in Utah. Dude. So. I got faith. Yeah, we'll be good. Yeah. So I'll be up to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, man. So yesterday after we left Reno, you and I drove kind of late into the night. And uh, we ended up here at this rest area. Uh, off of what road is this? Uh, 95? Yeah, US 95. Okay. Yep. We're just a little bit 
north of Tonopah. Yep. But uh, you're headed on to Phoenix. I am. I'm headed back to southern Utah. So we're going to split ways here. Yep. And uh, I got to finish out the work day here. But you're going to, you you have the ability to get moving a little bit. I do. So I work a little bit later. You can work later. So. Also, we just noticed the really cool um, sun thing we saw on the way out here is like in, in the view. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the solar well, energy the, thing. The solar energy plant. Yeah, it's yeah. right over there. Yep. So, um, anyway, I uh, guess this is where you and I part ways, and I'm going to, uh, you know, enjoy my internet while I'm here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Works pretty good. It's working all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some things. Uh, last night when we got here, I ran just a speed test, and then, and then after we went to sleep and I let it sit overnight, you know, I never shut it off. I ran a speed test again this morning and it was interesting to see how it kind of figured it out right. and the speeds were like a lot, lot better. Oh yeah, real good I this morning. stopped, yeah, yeah, so it was pretty good. And yeah, man, I'm not unhappy with the No, I mean, especially in the emotion. Yeah, the in motion is working great. I mean, yeah. you and I on the way here from Reno, yeah. it um, it was working and I, and I switched the network over to the 2.4 gigahertz because that has a little more range. The speeds aren't as good, but it has more range and you were having no issue. Zero issues. It like working, like picking your phone, picking it up, yep. you know, 10, 12 car lengths behind me, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm I, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I think there'll be a little bit of fine tuning to do on the whole thing as we kind of figure sure. things out. I, I did notice after we got up this morning, um, I was getting some drops uh i mean it wasn't horrible but when you're on a team's call it you know it, it's yeah. a little bit different so i took the truck and i reoriented it and it seems a lot better now so yeah. I, I think just kind of figuring things out like that is it's permanently mounted where it is like in which direction to park is a little better than the other and as they get more satellites up it'll get better too so Definitely. anyways i've gone on long enough man you're in part ways yep and um i'll be here working and then i'll make my way home and i so far, my transmission is <laughs> behaving, so I think we'll be good. All right. I'll get it fixed when I get back to Utah. Yeah, behaving enough. So, all right, dude. All right. Good seeing you. You too.